Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to uh, deal with uh, internal rate of rates of return, or more importantly, uh, how we derive the internal rate of return formula. Uh, but I suppose before we get to the derivation of the formula, we probably should look at the calculation of the internal rate of return for a particular project. Uh, this project is going to, I suppose, have a number of costs and benefits associated with it, uh, and they're detailed in this particular table uh, here in front of us. Uh, and in particular, what we're going to say is that initial startup costs for this small company is going to be €2,000, uh, and initially there will be no benefit gained. Uh, or no income uh, generated for this particular company. So today, at time zero, the cost of setup is going to be two thousand euros, and today there will be no benefits generated. And after the first year, uh, I suppose, or at the start of the second year, uh, the costs will be five hundred euros. Uh, but the income that has been achieved after one year will be one thousand euros. Uh, after two years has elapsed, or the start of the third year, the costs will be five hundred euros, uh, with an income generated of one thousand euros. Uh, and similarly, after three years has elapsed, costs will be five hundred euros and benefits two thousand euros. After four years have elapsed, the costs will be five hundred euros and the benefits will be 2,500 euros. Now, from a naive perspective, uh, we could ask ourselves the question whether over this particular one, two, three, four year period, with this schedule of costs and this schedule of benefits, uh, whether the project is expected to break even or not. I suppose, and this is our first attempt at trying to figure out uh, what's known as the internal rate of return, uh, or more importantly, trying to figure out what the interest rate should be uh, for a project to break even. But from a naive perspective, uh, we could see that in year zero, uh, the costs and the benefits, the net position, the difference in benefits to costs, uh, would be minus 2,000 euros. Okay. Uh, in year one, or well, after one year has elapsed, uh, the benefits minus the costs would be 500 euros. Uh, in year two, the benefits minus the costs would also be 500 euros. Uh, in year three, the benefits minus the costs would be 1,500 euros. Uh, and in year four, the benefits minus the costs, 2,500 minus 5,000, uh, sorry, 500 would be 2,000 euros. Uh, to give us a total net position over this particular four year period uh, of 2,000, 3,500, 4,000, 4,500 minus 2,000 gives us 2,500. So what we'd expect is, from a naive perspective, is that this project would earn 2,500 profit after, after, the four, after the four years has elapsed. But one thing that we haven't taken into consideration in this particular naive calculation uh, is the present value or the time value of money. 2,500 euros in four years' time isn't the same as 2,000 euros today. Uh, similarly, a cost of 500 euros in three years' time isn't the same as a cost of 2,000 euros today. So what we typically do is we calculate the present value uh, for each of our net values uh, that are represented or that are calculated for each year. And the present value formula uh, tells us that the present value, so this is the present value formula, the present value of a future value, okay, it says that the present value is simply equal to the future value divided by 1 plus i raised to the power of t, where t represents how many years we're discounting by. Okay. So in each one of these cases, we would need to calculate the present value. So let me call this uh, present value 1 calculation. And let's assume, for this, in this calculation, let's assume uh, that interest rates, let's assume that the interest uh, is, let's say, i is equal to 5%, or 0 0.05 as a decimal. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the present value for each one of these amounts. Uh, I'll do one or two of them and leave the rest for you as an example. So let's say in year zero, when t... When t is equal to zero, 
uh, in year zero, we have to calculate the present value of minus 2,000 euros. Okay, so the present value is going to be equal to minus 2,000, because that's the future value, divided by 1 plus 0 0.05, that's the interest rate, raised to the power of zero, because we're discounting by zero years, which just gives us minus 2,000 euros, divided by any number raised to the power of zero is one, so that's equal to minus 2,000 euros. So really, if you owe 2,000 euros today, you still owe 2,000 euros today, so the present value is minus 2,000 euros. Okay, and uh, let's have a look at year one, where we have 500 euros, so t is equal to one, and the present value for that particular uh, future value is going to be equal to 500 euros divided by 1 plus 0 0.05 and to be discounted by one year so that gives us 500 euros divided by 1.05 which gives us a value of and when we do this on the calculator we have 500 divided by 1.05 gives us a value of 476 euros and 19 cents so just let's say that that's equivalent to 476 euros really what we're saying is this if interest rates are running at 5%, and if I'm expected to have 500 euros in one year's time, that that 500 euros is equivalent in today's terms uh, to 476 euros. So 500 euros in one year's time is equivalent to 476 euros. And in a similar way, 500 euros in two years' time is going to be 500 divided by well, it's going to be uh, 1.05 discounted by 2 years, so it's 1.05 raised to the power of 2, which gives us a value of €453.51, which is approximately equal to 400 and, sorry, oh, is approximately equal to €454. Euros. 1,500 euros in three years' time. Well, the present value for that is when t is equal to three, it's going to be the present value is 1,500 euros divided by one plus 0 0.05, and it's discounted by three years. So it's 1,500 divided by 1.05 raised to the power of 3, which gives us a value of 1,295 euros and 75 cent, which is approximately 1,296 euros. And likewise, uh, the present value uh, of 2,000 euros in four years' time, when t is equal to 4, we get that the present value is equal to 2,000 divided by 1 plus. 0 0.05 discounted by four years. So we get 2,000 euros divided by 1.05 raised to the power of four gives us a value of 1,645 euros. Okay. So what we've done is we've discounted each one of these net positions back into today's terms. So everything is now relative to the cost of money today or the time value of money today. So f now from a present value perspective, uh, the total net position for this project over the five years, or the net present value, uh, would be €1,645 plus €1,296 plus €454 plus €476, they're all profits minus €2,000 because that's a cost gives us a value of 1,871 euros. And this is known as the net present value of our project, or it's the NPV. And let's call this NPV1, because we've done this uh, at an interest rate of 5%. Um, okay, so now we can compare our net present value at 5% to our naive calculation. So really, in today's terms, this project will only make a profit of 1,871 euros, and not 2,500 euros that we expected from a naive perspective. Okay, so let's do the calculation once more, uh, but let's this time choose a different interest rate. Okay, so let's say we've assumed we've assumed our interest rate to be, in this particular perspective, to be five percent. Uh, let's assume the interest rate. 
assume the interest. Let's assume it's 15%, okay? So we're going to assume that i is equal to 15%, which is equivalent to 0 0.15. And what we're going to do is we're going to do all of these net present values, all these present values again, PV2, so for an interest of 15%. So, once again, whatever you have today is worth what it is today. Uh, so, we owe 2,000 euros today. Uh, so, we still owe 2,000 euros today. Okay? 500 euros in a year's time isn't worth 500 euros today. So, we have to discount the 500 euros. But this time, the interest rate is going to be 0 0.15. So, we have 500 euros divided by 1.05 raised to the power of 1 because it's been discounted by one year gives us a value of 400 and oh sorry it's 1.15 so it's 500 euros divided by 1.15 raised to the power of 1 uh, gives us a value of 434 euros and 78 cents which is about 435 euros 500 euros in two years time from a present value perspective is 500 divided by 1.15 and we're going to raise that to the power of 2 so it's actually equal to 378 euros okay 1500 euros in three years time 1500 euros divided by 1.15 raised to the power of 3 is equal to 986 euros Okay, 2,000 euros in four years time is 2,000 euros divided by 1.15 raised to the power of four gives us a value of its worth 1,144 euros today. Okay. So just for these individual present value calculations, if you have a look at one of my previous videos uh, where we concentrate in a little bit more detail on the present value calculations themselves, for this video we're interested in constructing an internal rate of return formula. But what I wanted to have is two net present values so that we could actually see the relationship. So from a naive perspective, this project would, in today's, uh, would be expected to have a profit of 2,500 euros, but that doesn't take into consideration the time value of money. When we take into consideration the time value of money, and in particular interest running at 5%, uh, we have that the project in today's terms would earn 1,871 euros. Now, if interest rates change to 15%, and over the course of this project, if they were fixed at 15%, what we'd expect to have is, we'd expect to have 1144 plus 986 plus 378 plus 435 minus 2,000 euros, we'd expect the project to make 943 